Welcome back everybody to Beerinid 40k. So my last video I talked about this idea I had for the new Kill Team release that's going to be coming out from Games Workshop soon here in 2018 and how I want to make this idea for the scouring or for a 31k instead of the 30k that people have been playing out in the Horus Heresy tabletop as well as the 40k that we've been playing for decades, I talked about how there's this huge gap of 10,000 years in the fluff because of the fact that the very first edition of Warhammer 40k and Rogue Trader started us out in M41 in the timeline. And so I wanted to kind of bridge this gap between Horus Heresy players and regular 40k players and make something where we can all kind of meet in the middle and have this really kind of fun narrative skirmish type game that, again, I call the scouring, because that is the time period, as it's known in the fluff, when it was small war bands that were out there deciding the fate of the universe. You know, everybody was wrecked. The Xenos were wrecked from the Great Crusade. You know, the Space Marines were wrecked from their Civil War. Just everybody is low in numbers, low in resources. Uh, they're a mix of different power armor marks, for example. And so, to kind of help that idea spread, I wanted to talk about this really easy way to make true scale space marines. Because the fact of the matter is that you're only going to be building, I don't know, five, ten guys for this kill team. We'll find out when the actual rules for Eighth come out. Uh, it really lets you focus in on making unique, character filled little guys. Or instead of, oh, this is just a squad of ten guys, this is another squad of ten guys, this is a squad of five, here's two tanks. The, the way that we've gotten used to playing 40k in a lot of the recent years, we kind of harken back towards the more rogue trader style of building, playing where every guy matters. Every guy might have a name. Every guy might have his own fluff. And that's going to be reflected in how you build that. So the idea for true scale space marines is not new. I use terminator legs and just put normal bodies on top and it works out really well. And that again is not new. But if you look at what I did bring, basically my idea is that certain Terminator legs work better to represent certain uh, power armor marks on the finished models that are true scale. So that's kind of what I'm going to talk about today. You know, since we are going to be able to take time, customize each model, make small customized warbands, you know, and, and we're representing a kind of a time period, just some of the things that I think are easy, have flavor, and still represent the armor marks that we're talking about. So what you're seeing here is something I made last night. This is a, um, just an idea, basically, for, like I said, I want to make a small Alpha Legion warband. So Alpha Legion, uh, one thing that makes them special is that they had a lot of access to their own Mark VI Corvus armor. In fact, in the uh, Traders Hate or whatever codex that came out in 7th edition, right before it, it got retconned and they went, they announced 8th, they mentioned a special Mark VI Corvus pattern alpha armor. Um, and I think that has to do with the fluff that they're talking about, you know, in the Horus Heresy. Alpha Legion actually started having their own manufactorums and stuff to make armor and materials and things like that because they knew that the heresy was happening many years before it actually did. So that's kind of how I'm representing this here. If you look at the legs on this guy, that is from a Tartaros Terminator, but it is very similar to the lengthened Mark VI leg torso uh, set up there. And if you look at a Mark VI normally, it doesn't have a separate knee pad. It's just a straight line from basically the ankle all the way up to the knee. So the, Mark, the, the Tartaros works well for representing a Mark VI. That torso is actually a Mark II torso, uh, but I really want to go for that rogue trader tubes everywhere kind of a look, and I felt like this represented that more than the bog standard uh, Mark VI torso that you get in, say, a TAC Marine box. I think it gives it a little bit more character, a little bit kind of cooler, and to make this happen, all I do is I cut off the flaps that are sticking out of the top of the Tartaros armor and the bottom of that Mark II torso, or you'll see the same with Mark III. It's that crotch plate that goes and covers it. That's going to make it really hard to stick these two pieces together. So you just cut those little flaps off and 
with a ball of green stuff, this will just sit right on. And it makes a pretty cool little Mark VI guy. You can use whatever torso you want. In fact, you don't have to stick with what I'm talking about, these uh, specific armor mark, you know, goals and how to represent them best. You can just mix match for what you think looks cool. In fact, I've done that a little bit myself. So I'll show you a couple other ideas that I've had. So this is uh, an idea I made a while back for a, um, a uh, Night Lord. So that is the standard Chaos uh, Space Marine um, Terminator legs. And then everything up top except the backpack and the helmet is from the Age of Sigmar Corn. Uh, I believe it is Blood Warriors. So you could put some shoulder pads on there and stuff. And this is going back to what I'm saying. In this time period, a lot of the Chaos... You look at the World Eaters, they were killing 80,000 Raven Guard over the course of a few days. They lost the War of Terra, and then now they're marching towards the Eye of Terror, uh, stopping at Worlds and wrecking face, you know, reveling in their new worship of Corn on the way to that Eye of Terror. And so their armor marks would just be destroyed from all this fighting. And so something like that, you know, the arms and all that, I think they work well. Again, this is just a proxy. It's just a blue tacked little kit bash to get an idea, but I think that that would represent a pretty decent little Night Lord in the scouring. Uh, not very specific on armor marks or anything like that, other than the fact that it looks like a Night Lord, potentially. I don't like the bat wings very much on the Night Lords, so I think it's something that I would warm up to eventually, but for now, I would just probably keep things very, very tame and go for it. like the sculpted detail you see on his chest and things like that. And as far as the arms go, I would cut those weapons off and put, for example, a Laz pistol or something like that. You know, just do a hand swap. Keep the arms, but just change what, what you know what the arms are holding. That's very easy if you just cut it off at the wrists. You can get any kind of weapon you want and just glue it on there. So let's see what's next. Okay, so this is something I had an idea to make a Chaplain Grimaldus from the. Um, the Hell's Reach fan series that's been going on lately. Uh, I, I've really been enjoying that. What they've done is they've taken an audiobook, uh, and it's, it's of the Black Templar chapter, and a fan has been animating it digitally as, you know, the story progresses. And the Grimaldus mask looks a lot like these new Primaris Reaver masks. And so this was the idea for that. So this is something I do a lot that would represent a Mark III power armor set uh, by those legs. Those legs are the Cataphracty Terminator legs and again just any torso really. You can stick that on top and start to build around that to make a Mark III which is what I've done here. This is basically an entire Mark III style marine except for the legs. And I've glued, you know, a couple pouches on there and stuff. But again, this is just the Cataphracty Terminator legs. Standard Mark III torso. I've just cut the flap off and, you know, put a little bit of green stuff, stuck them together. And you take some, you know, pouches and everything. And it gives a really cool, convincing Mark III Marine that is the same size as a Primaris. And it allows for a lot of customization, a lot of fun stuff. So I think that this kind of thing is really fun to play around with for the scouring. In fact, I think that if you're into Blanchitsu or some of this stuff, if you've seen Blanchitsu in the in the White Dwarfs or you're part of, for example, the Inquisitorum uh, group or any of that, I think that that will really help you out in terms of making cool little miniature warbands for a skirmish game that are really unique, have a lot of narrative, a lot of fluff in them. So I'll put a link to a Blanchitsu playlist that uh, a Bits reseller that has a channel here on YouTube, bitsbox.co.uk, made. And it'll give you a really cool introduction into how Blanchitsu works. And maybe between that video and this video and some of the, or those videos and this video, because it's a, it's a playlist that he made, uh, and some of the ones that I make in the future, maybe you can start to get an idea and some inspiration for what it is that you want to create doesn't have to be Space Marines. Uh, in fact, I think that a lot of my guys from the Alpha Legion are going to be what they call the Sparatoy in the fluff, the uh, sewn men or the agents of the Alpha Legion. And so it's going to be fun to 
uh, model those and, and kit bash and create something with that too. And you can do that with your army, no matter what you play. There's some way to make it really unique to represent something special on the tabletop. And again, I hope that you'll be doing this with me with this new uh, kill team release so we can make a 31K, the scouring. So I hope that you found that helpful. I'll put that link to the Blanchitsu, you know, uh, series playlist that bitsbox.co.uk made. That'll be in the description. And you can watch that if this is something that interests you. And like I said, between that series and the videos that I put out, maybe it'll get you kind of motivated to, to join with us. Now I am thinking of doing a, a contest of some kind. I'm not quite sure on the details yet. I don't know what I would do as a prize that would motivate people enough. And I was thinking cash at first, you know, like uh, making a Facebook group, you upload pictures of the bits, the construction, and then a final painted, you know, bunch of models for your warband, and everybody votes on it. And if you won, you would get, like, for example, a little bit of cash or something. But not everybody lives in the U.S., so I don't know if that would be the best. I'm thinking maybe... Uh, Amazon gift card might be better, but I don't know if that's going to be enough motivation to take people who are on the fence and maybe push them into showing off some of their modeling skills and, and things like that and getting people that are maybe considering this to pull the trigger and jump in and make a war band. So if you have any suggestions for that, let me know in the comments. So I hope this helped. Again, very short video, very simple, but you know, true scale space marines are cool and if you're only building 10 Marines and you've been afraid to get into this all that time, you know, with the true scale and everything, because it won't match the rest of your army, build 510 heroes and have that be your, uh, your uh, kill team, basically. So I hope that this helps. I hope you're finding this useful along with all the other content of the page. And uh, again, I'd like to know your thoughts in the description below. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Bearned40K, and I'll talk to you again next time.